Hey guys, so today I'm gonna talk about how to record your music to cassette. Uh, I remember when I first was trying to print my music to cassette, or record it to cassette, uh, I had a lot of questions, so I figured now that I've been doing it for a while, I should probably share some of my knowledge and help other people out. So, uh, here's kind of an example of one of the cassettes I'm working on right now. Um, a dungeon synth slash crypt hop project of mine called Little Sheath. Um, the cassette is actually not in this case right now because I'm using it to record the um, the other. I'm using it to dub the other tapes. So, uh, but yeah, let me just break it down step by step. So yeah, my studio kind of a mess right now. It always tends to get like this whenever I get busy. But um, let me just start talking about. Um, the process so this is the like a blank tape cassette you can order these from duplication.ca um, also I think there's a company called National Audio um, but they don't really have as many different color selections so these are some basic clear cassettes um, you can go on their website and order blank tapes and choose the color and the length of the tape that you want so say your album is 20 minutes long and you want to split it into a side A, side B, then you could put, you know, the first few songs on side A and then the rest of it on side B, so long as they fit in that 10 minute mark. Um, for me, this album that I'm recording right now is about 18 minutes long, and I just decided I'm going to uh, record it, the full album, on both sides, because these cassettes are about 20 minutes long on each side. All right, and these are my tape decks. So, um, for your right now, uh, I've got the master cassette in this top deck, and I've got the output coming from the headphones um, using one of these uh, cables that converts um, auxiliary to whatever that R RGB type cable is basically going into the input section on my Nakamichi down here. Um, I got all these tape decks used so um, you can find them online for relatively affordable prices. I think this one was like 250 bucks. This one I think was about 200 and uh, this Akai one actually bought it on eBay for like 80 bucks but um, it, the record function doesn't work so uh, keep in mind when you're buying used products that you know sometimes they're not working and these things are pretty expensive to um, fix I think I did have to take this one into the shop both of these um, to fix the um, the uh, rotating thing whatever the thing that spins the cassette I don't know what it's called <laughs> so they uh, yeah it costed like maybe 400 ish bucks to repair both of them anyway so this tech this tape deck up here I'm just using it to play the cassette because the record function doesn't work and this one does work with the record function so um, once that um, once this side of the tape finishes I can sort of record you know the steps to how to set that up if you don't have a tape deck you can use, um, I believe, when I first started out, I used one of those boom boxes that plays cassettes. You can get those on Amazon or Walmart even. I think I got one at Best Buy. The quality is not as good, but, you know, for certain genres of music, like Dungeon Synth or Black Metal, we, we kind of prefer lo-fi quality sometimes. So, you know, that's up to you. Um, so, for the master tape... I, of course, didn't, I, in order to record the master first, I had to put the blank tape into my Nakamichi, and then instead of having the input coming out of a tape deck, I actually had it coming from my phone. So I used my auxiliary cord from my phone, played the album um, while the record function was working, and uh, maybe I can go into a little bit more detail in another video for that, but... Um, that's how I recorded the master on both sides and then now I'm just using that same master tape to record all the other tapes 
um, so that you know I can get my phone back and just kind of flip the tapes every time they're done recording. While we're here, there's something I want to talk about, and this is kind of why I started mastering music. Um, you can see here the record level, and on every tape deck should have something like this, um, but they're all going to look a little different, right? But you can see the volume going up and bouncing up, um, basically cr just crossing the zero there. You don't want it to go any louder than that, because then you'll start to get distortions. So this is why mastering your music before you record it and release it is important because during the mastering process we look at each song in the album and make sure that their volumes are um, peaking at or hitting around the same level. Um, you don't want like random jumps in your volume because then you know you might start recording the cassette and it's like okay sounds great but then you forgot there's this loud part in one of your songs and that part totally just wrecks <laughs> the recording process and gets all distorted um, so that's not really desirable you want to definitely nip that in the butt while you're working on the album master and uh, if you need any help with that obviously I do this for a living now so feel free to get in touch and send me your music and I can help you master it so this machine right here is a duplicator a copy it, I believe. Um, what's the company? Telex. Let's, let's see that. Yeah, Tel Telex copy it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it um, relatively cheap but super handy. I just you know um, wanted to try one of these out. I've heard and read various things about like their quality. Um, this one is just a, let me put the phone down real quick. This one um, only records copies to one cassette. Um, basically, it's a, and it's in mono, so if you have like stereo panning in your album, it's probably not the best um, to use this to duplicate your cassettes. Um, because all of that information will basically be, you know, lost, not really listen listenable. But if your music is mainly in mono, then this wouldn't should work just fine. Um, I used it for a few albums in the past, and I don't think the quality was that bad. You know, as long as you're okay with the mono sync, the mono setting, um, and it is save a lot of time if you're recording or duplicating a lot of copies. Uh, I think. This this record that I'm uh, dubbing right now is only I'm only doing ten copies of it, and it does have some inf like uh, stereo information that I want to be recorded. So that's why I'm recording it in real time. But if I was making like twenty five copies, thirty copies, then I might consider using this one instead. It's much much faster.